Hey, welcome to the Scored Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to adding fractions with the same denominators. Practice questions. If you need any extra help with adding fractions with the same denominator or subtracting fractions with the same denominator, if you go to CordMaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 132, there's a dedicated video tutorial there on it. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to go through the video solutions to the practice questions. So let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at question number one. So question number one says, work out one fifth plus one fifth. Well, if we've got a fifth and we add another fifth, altogether we'd have two fifths, and we write that as two fifths. And whenever we're adding fractions with the same denominator, as long as they've got the same denominators, we can just add the numerators. So one fifth plus one fifth would be equal to, well, one plus one is equal to two, so the answer would be two fifths, and the answer would be two fifths, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number two. So question number two says work out three sevenths plus two sevenths. Well, if we had three sevenths and then we add another two sevenths, altogether we'd have five sevenths. And again, three plus two is equal to five, so then it would be five sevenths. So the answer is five sevenths, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number three. Question number three says work out seven ninths subtract five ninths. Well, if we had seven ninths and we took away five of those ninths, we'd be left with two ninths. So the answer would be two ninths. And again, whenever we're adding or subtracting fractions, if they've got the same denominator, we can just either add or subtract the numerators. So seven take away five is equal to two. So the answer would be two ninths. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number four. Question number four says, work out 13 fifteenths, subtract 11 fifteenths. Well, if we had 13 fifteenths and we took away 11 of those fifteenths, we'd be left with two fifteenths. So the answer would be two fifteenths. And again, because the, both of the fractions have got the same denominator, we can just do 13, take away 11, that's equal to two. So the answer would be two fifteenths. So the answer is two fifteenths. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five, it's an on-calculator question, and we've been asked to shade in two-fifths of this grid. So you can do this in a couple of different ways. The first thing I notice is this five columns. We've got one, two, three, four, five columns. And we've been asked to shade in two-fifths of the grid, so we just need to shade in two of the columns. So if we shade in the first column, so this is the first column, shade it in, this one. And then if we shade in the next column, then we've shaded in two-fifths of the grid because we've shaded in two out of the five columns. So that's one way we could do that question. Alternatively, because it was one, two, three, four, five, so it's five, ten, fifteen, twenty boxes in this grid, if we work out two-fifths of twenty, that would tell us how many we need to shade. And to get two-fifths of a number, we divide by the bottom and times by the top, so we take twenty because there's twenty boxes in this grid. We'll take twenty, we'll divide it by the bottom, so we'll divide by five, and twenty divided by five is four. Now we'll take the 4 and we'll multiply by the numerator. 4 times 2 is equal to 8. So we'd shade in 8 of the boxes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And that's it. So question A was to shade in 2 fifths of the grid. Well, we've shaded in 2 of the 5 columns. That's 2 fifths. Or we could just shade in 8 of the boxes. And that's it. Okay, question B. Question B says to work out 2 fifths plus 1 fifth. Well, you could do this just considering what two fifths plus one fifth is. Two fifths plus one fifth would be equal to three fifths, so the answer would be three fifths, so three fifths. And you can do that just by adding the numerators. Two plus one is equal to three, so it's three fifths. Alternatively, we could use part A to help us. We had a grid, and we've got one, two, three, four, five columns in this grid. There's one, two, three, four, five columns. We've shaded in two of them, and we wanted to work out two fifths plus three fifths. So let's shade in another fifth, so we've got another column, because each column is a fifth. So if we shaded in another column, this is what we'd have. We'd have two fifths plus one fifth, and two fifths plus one fifth would be equal to three fifths. Um, so that's how we could use the grid to help us. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number six. Okay, let's have a look at question number six. And question number six is a bit different than the ones we've done so far because it says work out nine temps take away three temps. And then we've been asked to simplify our answer. And what that means is whenever we do this question, we add or subtract the fractions, or in this case, subtract the fractions, the answer we get can be simplified or cancelled down. And if you go to corbinmiles.com forward slash content, so you scroll down to fractions, simplifying, there'll be a video tutorial there on simplifying fractions. And I'm going to presume you know how to do that. So I'm just going to go through it as if you know how to cancel down fractions. So if you need some extra help on it, that video would be quite useful. So we've been asked to work out nine temps take away three temps. Well, if we had nine temps and we take away three temps, we'd be left with six temps because nine take away three is six. And then we've got six temps. Now, six temps can be cancelled down. That's a fraction that can be simplified because both six and ten are divisible by two. We can half both of those numbers. And if we do six divided by two, we get three. And if we do ten divided by two, we get five. 
So the answer would be three fifths. So nine tenths take away three tenths would be six tenths, and that can be simplified to three fifths. So the answer is three fifths, and that's it. So it's very important whenever you're adding and subtracting fractions, you know how to simplify or to cancel down your answer. Okay, let's go to our next question, question number seven. So question number seven says to work out three tenths plus three tenths and to simplify our answer. Well, three tenths plus three tenths, well, well, that would be three plus three, six. That's going to be six tenths. And again, we can cancel this down because both six and ten are divisible by two. We can half them both to get three fifths. So the answer would be three fifths. Okay, let's have a look at question number eight. So question number eight says to work out three eighths plus one eighth and to simplify our answer. Well, if we had three eighths and we add one eighth, well, that would be four eighths because three plus one is equal to four, so that's four eighths. And then we've been asked to simplify our answer. Now we could have both of these numbers because they're both divisible by two, but I can actually see they're both divisible by four. So we can divide both of these numbers by four. And four divided by four is one, and eight divided by four is equal to two. So four eighths is the same as a half. And if you think about it, if we had something like a pizza and we cut it into eighths and we've got four of them, that's a half. So the answer is a half. So three eighths plus one eighth is a half, and that's it. Okay, let's look at question number nine. So question number nine says to work out 11 fifteenths take away two fifteenths and simplify our answer. If we had 11 fifteenths and we take away two fifteenths, that would be nine fifteenths. So 11 fifteenths take away two fifteenths is nine fifteenths. But we've been asked to simplify our answer. Now both the nine and the 15, they're both divisible by three. So let's divide both of these numbers by three. Nine divided by three is three, and 15 divided by three is five. So 11 fifteenths take away 2 fifteenths is 9 fifteenths, and that cancels down to 3 fifths. So the answer is 3 fifths. Okay, let's have a look at question number 10. So question number 10 says 7 ninths plus something is equal to 1. Now 1 is a whole, and we want to work out we're dealing with ninths here. We've got 7 ninths. We want to see what do we add to 7 ninths to get a whole. Well, if we consider a cake or a pizza, and we imagine it's cut into ninths, and we've got seven of them, we would need another two of them to make a whole. So that means the missing fraction would be two ninths, because seven ninths plus two ninths would be a whole. Or if another way to think of it is seven ninths plus two ninths would be nine ninths, and nine ninths is a whole, and that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11 says, there are red, blue, and green counters in a bag, and five eighths of the counters are red, and one eighth of the counters are blue, what fraction of the counters are green? So in this question, you can see we've got five eighths of the counters are red and one eighth of the counters are blue. So if we add those two fractions together, that would tell us what fraction of the counters are red or blue. And then because the bag contains just red, blue, and green counters, we can then figure out what fraction of the counters must be green. So let's add these two fractions together, five eighths plus one eighth. And five eighths plus one eighth would be six eighths. So that would be six eighths because five plus one is equal to six. So that would be six eighths. So that means that in this bag, six eighths of the counters are red or blue. So that's a fraction that are red or blue. So we now know that six eighths of the counters in this bag are red or blue. So that means that the rest of them must be green. So if we take this fraction away from eight eighths, that's one, all the countries in the bag, what's left must be the fraction of the countries that are green. So because the bag will have eight eighths, so we're gonna do eight eighths, and we're gonna take away six eighths, and what's left will be what fraction of the countries are green. So eight eighths take away six eighths. And if we had eight eighths, and we take away six eighths, that would be two eighths. So that means that two eighths of the countries are green. Now two eighths can be canceled down. We can divide both of these numbers by two. So two divided by two is one, and eight divided by two is four. So that means that a quarter of the counters in this bag are green. And that's it. So just to recap, we were told that five eighths of the counters are red, and one eighth of the counters are blue. And if you add those two together, you get that's equal to six eighths. All of the counters in the bag must add up together then to be eight eighths because it's full, it's one, it's a whole. So if we take six eighths away from eight eighths, what's left will be the fraction of the counters that are green. And that's equal to two eighths, which cancels down to one quarter. And that's it. Okay, let's look at question number 12. Okay, let's have a look at question number 12. So question number 12 says, three fifths of the students in a class travel to school by bus. What fraction of the class do not travel to school by bus? So the students in the class will either travel to school by bus or not by bus. So that means that three-fifths plus the fraction of the class who do not travel to school by bus will have to add together to be the whole class, or five-fifths. So we need to figure out what do we add to three-fifths to get to five-fifths. So if we do five-fifths 
take away three fifths, that would tell us what fraction of the class are left, and that would be the fraction of the class that do not travel to school by bus. So five fifths take away three fifths would be equal to two fifths. So that means that if three fifths of the students in a class travel to school by bus, two fifths of the class will not travel to school by bus. So the answer is two fifths, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 13. So question number 13 says, work out seven ninths plus four ninths, and we've got to circle the correct answer, and we've got four options. So let's work out the answer to this question. So if we had seven ninths, and we added four ninths, that would be 11 ninths, so 11 ninths. And let's just check that. If we add the numerator, seven plus four is equal to 11, so that's 11 ninths. Now, 11 ninths is a top-heavy fraction. So let's write that as a mixed number. Let's change this top-heavy fraction to a mixed number. And there's a video tutorial on Code Maths on how to do that, but I'm just going to recap it in this video. If we had 11 ninths, well, let's consider a pizza or a cake. If we had 9 ninths, that's equal to a whole. So if we had 11 ninths, we'd have some more left over. So 11 ninths would be, well, 9 ninths is a whole, so let's write 1. And we'd have two more left over because nine ninths is a whole, so we'd have two more ninths left over, so that'd be two ninths. So 11 ninths is the same as one and two ninths because one's nine ninths, and if we had another two ninths, that's 11 ninths. So the answer would be one and two ninths. So let's circle our answer one and two ninths, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number 14. So question number 14 says a hockey team won seven twelfths of their matches and they drew one twelfth of their matches. What fraction of the matches did they lose? So whenever a hockey team plays the hockey, they can either win their matches, they can draw their matches, or they can lose their matches. So that means that the fractions will have to add together to give us one or a whole. And in this case, we're dealing with 12, so that means they must add together to give us 12 twelfths. So let's add these two fractions together, the fraction that they won and the fraction that they drew. So 7 twelfths plus 1 twelfth, well 7 twelfths plus 1 twelfth would be 8 twelfths. So the fraction of the matches that the hockey team either won or drew would be 8 twelfths. Now we know that all the matches must add together to be 12 twelfths. So that means that we need to figure out what we add to 8 twelfths to get to 12 twelfths. And I can just see that's 4 twelfths, or we could do 12 twelfths take away 8 twelfths, and that's equal to 4 twelfths. So that must mean the hockey team loses 4 twelfths of their matches. Now 4 and 12 are both divisible by 4, so let's divide both of these by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 12 divided by 4 is 3. So that means the hockey team loses one third of their matches. That's it, one third. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our last question, question number 15. So question number 15 says, the map below shows the beach, shop, and hotel. So we've got the beach, the shop, and the hotel. And as you can see, the distance between the shop and the hotel is 7 twentieths of a kilometre. And the distance between the beach and the hotel is 19 twentieths of a kilometre. So they're the distances between the beach and the hotel and the shop and the hotel. And the question says, work out the distance between the beach and the shop. So we need to work out this distance here. Now, if we want to work out this distance, we would just take this distance, this smaller distance away from the whole distance, and what's left would be this distance. So we need to do 19 twentieths of a kilometer, subtract 7 twentieths of a kilometer, and what's left will be this distance. So let's work that out. So 19 twentieths take away 7 twentieths. Well, 19 twentieths take away 7 twentieths. Well, 19 take away 7 is 12, so that'll be 12 twentieths. And let's just cancel down our fraction. Let's simplify our fraction. 12 and 20, they're divisible by 2, but they're also divisible by 4, so let's divide both of these by 4. 12 divided by 4 would be equal to 3, and 20 divided by 4 is equal to 5. So that means the distance between the beach and the shop must be 3 fifths of a kilometre, and that's it. So if the distance between the beach and the hotel is 19 twentieths of a kilometre, and the distance between the shop and the hotel is 7 twentieths of a kilometre, if we take 7 twentieths away from 19 twentieths, we're left with 12 twentieths of a kilometre, and if we simplify that, we realise that's equal to 3 fifths of a kilometre. So the distance between the beach and the shop would be 3 fifths of a kilometre. And if you wanted to change that into metres, you could work out 3 fifths of a thousand, because there's a thousand metres in a kilometre, and 3 fifths of a thousand is equal to 600 because if you take a thousand and divide it by five that's 200 meters and then if you times that by three that's 600 meters so you could change it into meters if you wanted to but in this question we weren't told to so i'm just going to leave the answer as three fifths of a kilometer that's the distance between the beach and the shop and that's it. So these have been the video solutions to the adding fractions with the same denominators practice questions. I really hope you find this video useful. If you have found it useful, please like it and please subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you need any extra help on this topic, go to courtmavs.com forward slash contents and scroll down to video number 132. And there's a video tutorial there on adding and subtracting fractions with the same denominator. But again, I really hope you find this video useful. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.